again. I'm your guest editor, Mr. Spock One, Michael Richmond, here to introduce you once again to part two of the UTS instructional video with the professor. But before I hand you over to him, I will remind everybody to please read the links I have provided and the information available, and please visit the professor's website again to take a look at all the other great videos he's posted on his site, including videos on PL1, MBS, TSS370, and many other areas of interest. Also, I encourage everybody to join our unofficial Discord channel. If you would like an invitation, please give a mention in the comments and I will add a link. Now, once again, here is the professor. Hello, this is Rene, and this is the second video on Amdahl UTS. So this time we're going to work on the system itself. We're going to add a disk and mount a directory on it to store the user directories. I'm going to add a guest account and explore a little bit the system with you. That's going to be a longer video, I believe, but let's try to do it uh, clean. So first thing, I'm going to log on to root. So first I have to dial the system, then root. Uh, if I do ls minus l, I can see a typical uh, content for the slash directory on a Unix system. Let's go into etc. where Usually a lot of fun stuff is located, so cd etc. I want to show you a file called device list, which a self-explaining name. That's going to give you the list of devices for the virtual machine or the system, if you wish, with the addresses. Uh, so that's where we learn, for example, that you have a DASD here on the address uh, 770. That's why I define my mini disk on that address in the VM directory entry. And that's the DASD I'm going to uh, use, or the disk I'm going to use to mount uh, a home directory for the guest uh, account or for the users on the system. Okay. Uh, this seems to be already there on that system, so I'm not sure where it comes from. Maybe from the sysgen. If you want to change this, maybe you have to do uh, an iogen or a rebuild the kernel or redo the sysgen. I don't know. So that's something you could explore if you want. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, use that address uh, 770 to add a disk essentially because if I do a DF you can see that I have these disks over here but uh, there is no DSK 770 so I would like essentially to have a slash dev DSK 770 mounted on slash home something like that the first thing I need to do is to format the the mini disk okay there's a command for that let's look at the manual entry uh, so we have to do slash etc format with the special file and that's the one corresponding to the fast as the interface so we have to use something like fdsk770 if you want to quit a, a man page you can just uh, type q like this okay so we want to do slash format slash dev slash fdsk seven seven like this so it's gonna take some time but not that long actually yeah. and then I have to build a file system on it so that's the command uh, mkfs make file system and this time we use the standard special file And I have about uh, 23,000 nodes for the for the file, so that's okay. 
And now I want to mount slash home on it, but first I have to create slash home. And then I mount uh, if I'm right, that's what's the syntax? I don't remember. I think it's the device first, huh? Okay, mount special name with the name. Okay, that's fine. Q, that, etc. Mount slash dev DSK 77 slash home. Now, if I do this, I have my disk with slash home. Of course, this is just, I just manually mount the, the file system, so I would need this to be automatically mount the next time the system is auto logon. So, to do that, I have to um, update a few files. So, there are two files. The first one is the device list, maybe. So, I need to update or edit this file. VI doesn't work. What exists on this is uh, something called NED, which is a full screen editor that behaves pretty much like a typical 3270 uh, full screen editor. So let's do that. And here maybe I put uh, slash home. What you have to do now is uh, type W to write and Q to quit. And now I'm gonna also edit another file, mount list. All right, so I'm gonna mount, I'm gonna put the mount instruction there. Uh, so uh, it's over here with an I, slash etc. slash mount, slash dev, dev, uh, no, DSK, D slash home. Now, uh, if I'm right, you can press PF3, it's gonna do the, the write and quit, but let's do that this way. And then, <coughs> before I leave uh, root, of course I need to create the guest account. Uh, there's a command for that, so ls. Hmm. You can see that inside etc. you have this command add user and delete user. So let's use it. There is a manual entry. And then another one for the other one. Okay, so Q. Let's add the user. Okay, guest account. Now I have to give a department. Mm -hmm. If I don't give a department, it's going <laughs> to complain about it. And if you read the manual entry, you learn that this department must be four character long, exactly. So, I don't know. Let's call it UTSX, whatever. Uh, the user ID, guest, password, let's say uh, pass for you, pass for you. The rest you don't need, and of course you need to specify the home directory, but that's not the full home directory, that's just the base uh, name, so that's that would be slash home. And then I press enter, and it's going to add the user. And now I want to quit, so I have to press test rec, or sys rec for that matter. So... Uh, <clears throat> you go there and you press sysrec and you quit add user. Okay, so now if I cat uh, etc. password, I can see the user guest that has been uh, added to the system with the user ID 9 over there. You can see that there are other users. Typically, they have as password the, the, the user ID itself. So you may want to, to change that if you wish, but anyway, it's just a, a game Unix, a game Unix system somehow. Okay. One last thing uh, before I leave root. Uh, this uh, Unix system works only under VM 370. 
which might be seen as a, a flaw somehow, but uh, we have to put it in context. Maybe it was uh, developed in 1973, you know, way before the PCs and other stuff. And in a sense, it bear uh, it bears resemblance with CMS. So if you look at CMS, it's a single user operating system that can only be executed in a virtual machine under VM 370 or ZVM for that matter. But the good news, or one advantage, I say, is that CMS knows somehow pretty well that it runs in a virtual machine under VM. It knows about CP, it knows about other virtual machines, and have commands for that, and that's a little bit the, the, the same for this system. This UTS system works only under VM370, but it knows about CP and it knows about the other virtual machines. We have commands for that. So uh, there are two commands that can be used in, um, in root. These are cpcmd and cpmode. cpmode will put the, uh, not the machine, but I believe the account in cpmode, and you can type commands, uh, cp commands, affecting the virtual machine, the entire virtual machine, for example, changing uh, the class of a uh, unit record devices. And I believe you could most probably add temporary disk and stuff like that, but although we have to think a little bit how we would do that. Uh, if you want, you can, instead of putting yourself in CP mode, you can send a command one at a time with the CP command. So if I want, for example, I can say slash etc. slash CP command and then query query names. And I have the names and you know of all the virtual machines on the VM370. Of course, query is not a dangerous uh, command, so uh, all the all the user on UTS can uh, query, basically. But if you want to change something to the virtual configuration, then you have to use root and these commands, essentially. So they, uh, UTS knows about CP because we have these, uh, these commands that uh, allow you to... <coughs> Uh, type and execute CP commands. There is also another command uh, called VM punch, which allows you to punch a file to another virtual machine. Okay, so basically it's the equivalent of the punch command on CMS. So uh, we're going to use that uh, a little bit later. <coughs> Q to quit. So now that we have guessed, let me quit uh, root and uh, explore a little bit. Okay, so if I want to leave, remember I do log off. This will log me off or exit the, the shell, if you wish, and also drop me from UTS. So I have to dial again if I want to uh, log into another account. But one way to avoid this is just type login like this. and I will have the name now and there's no drop, so I can switch to another user essentially, like guest, fast for you. And uh, now I have the, the prompt, uh, the standard prompt. <coughs> and there's not that much this time, of course. There's only one directory with this uh, strange name, three dot, three dots, and that, that's actually a directory if I go in there. Uh, there's not that much in there. There's this news file, but that's also the directory where you want to put the profile. Okay, that uh, special file that contains commands that are going to be executed when you log on. So that's where you you put the, the profile. I don't have any one, and I don't want to create one for the moment, but I will transfer one uh, very soon. Uh, one thing I want to do right away, maybe, is uh, go to the slash user uh, directory and see what's in there. You, there are three things I want to discuss. First of all, this src, that's the directory containing the sources of the operating system, the commands and everything else. So for those of you who are interested by this, and I know that many uh, 
many people in the Discord channel and somewhere else, you know, are, are only interested in an operating system provided they have the sources or something like that. So that's uh, the, the candy store for these people, I guess. There's the spool uh, folder that I'm going to talk about very soon. And there is, more importantly, this doc folder where the documentation of the system is located. In addition to the uh, the manual, of course. Uh, so uh, there's not there are three do three uh, folders in there, but the one you are interested in is out. It contains essentially the formatted uh, manuals for the system, not the the manuals, but the form the formatted documentation of the system. So if I do this. You can see there is one about C, one about this accounting, uh, backup, uh, C tour, disk, uh, decon, etc. And there is one interesting which is called BEG here, the beginner's guide actually. Uh, if I do a cat BEG like this, UTS for beginners, that's actually uh, apparently a text from Brian uh, Kerningham. In fact, probably Unix for beginners, which was edited for UTS afterwards. Okay, it's interesting because that's where you learn, for example, <laughs> uh, about these keys, which are these uh, sequence, which are uh, important in a Unix system, like Control D and Control Q and Control C or something like that. Of course, you can't do that on a 3270, so the equivalent is here. Okay. So, for example, the test rec or the end of transmission that you normally do with Control D on a standard Unix system, uh, you have to use the test rec or the sysreg key for, for that. So that's interesting to know. And you learn a little bit uh, other things. There is also, now if I want to quit this, for example, I have to provide the interrupt signal, so maybe PA1 and then clear. Uh, there is another one. Hmm. Uh, if I'm right, you can see there is a manual about uh, NET, the editor, a tutorial and a reference. So that might be interesting to look at it. Although that the the editor behaves pretty much like uh, we are used to, but I find it quite interesting. So. And maybe you would like to print those guys, so it's not so difficult. There is a command called OPR, on offline print. Basically, you say OPR with the name of the of the file, but it's better if you uh, give the the class here of a of a printer, a real printer. So whether it's E or F, they both have class A. So if you specify that class, most probably that's going to get uh, printed easily. So, for example, OPR dash C A uh, BEG. <coughs> what about this thing? Oh, here it is. Print uh, 00 E output of UTS. Okay. So. Maybe my screen was uh, frozen somehow, <clears throat> so that that's gonna work. I'm not sure if you don't specify class uh, a class of one of the real printer. It might be the case that uh, this will stay in the printer, the virtual printer queue somehow. So maybe you can check about it uh, later if you wish. Uh, <clears throat> now the next thing I would like to discuss maybe is how to. Uh, um, how to transfer data in and out uh, an account on UTS, okay? So I made a video a long, a long time ago about how to do this with a CMS uh, virtual machine. Uh, on UTS, situation is not as easy, unfortunately, so maybe some contribution could be done there. Uh, first thing, you have this VM punch, as I said. But that allows you only to punch to other virtual machines, not to the, the, not to the the punch, the virtual punch of UTS, or maybe uh, no, it allows you only to punch a file into the virtual reader of another 
virtual machine. That's kind of the same thing as punch. So well, maybe it can do better than that. I haven't read the old entry. So given five, let's go to the VM punch. Okay. We'll spool to the punch file to the virtual reader of VM ID. I don't know if it's possible to use it to to the VM punch, uh, the virtual punch of the virtual machine, but it's something to explore. I haven't tried it, to be honest, because I, there is another way to get uh, files more easily. I'm going to show you. Uh, <coughs> there's also something called VM read, but this one is in section three. It's a program that's going to read the spool files inside the virtual reader of the UTS virtual machine. Okay, so that that cannot be done directly by a user on UTS, but it's done by the system. Uh, and in fact, uh, this uh, command VM read runs continuously in the background, you know. Uh, let me show you. PSAX. You can see that among the processes running, you have this VM read continuously uh, reading the virtual reader of the UTS virtual machine. So that's how you can send a file to the virtual machine. Uh, there is also VM broad for broadcast. That's because uh, you can, on VM, the operator or someone can broadcast a message to all the virtual machines. But if you broadcast a message to UTS, you want this message to be broadcast to all the users. So that's the process that's going to do it. C run is very well known. Update, update the super block of the file system. That's what I read in the manual. So, and you have all these inits over there. This is strange. At least it was strange for me. But what happens is that you have the first one here, and then this guy is going to fork himself or itself for all the the lines uh, that you can use to connect to the system uh, to, to log in. Essentially, these inits over there, in my mind, you know, they behave a little bit like a, a Getty, uh, <coughs> like you have on uh, many the Unix system, at least on the one I work in the past. So uh, I want to quit this. <laughs> That's it. Uh, right, so if I do man, that must be three in it, I suppose. Okay, in it is invoke at the last step of the IPL. Generally, its role is to create a process for each typewriter on which a user may log in. Okay, and later on they say then in it reads the file etc. tty's and forks several times create a process for each typewriter specified in the file. Okay, so when I do this, um, AX, you see the first shell connected here to TTY 400 comes from a, one of those inits, essentially. And uh, when I log off, this shell will disappear and a new uh, HRA init will be spawned, I guess, uh, to replace the one that just up. Okay. So that's the role of these inits. Beside that, there's not that much running. There's a spooler, I believe, over here. That's fine. So uh, if I want to read, if I want to send a file, let's say, to UTS, I can use the card reader. Uh, and I just... Uh, perform the same way, you know, that we do uh, with a CMS virtual machine. So uh, in my UTS account, uh, not UTS account, but UTS folder, you know, that I showed you in a previous video, there was in fact a few other files there. So let me try to transfer these files. So you do something like this, dev in it, uh, C, and then let's say a profile for uh, this uh, account. Now I can see that uh, this has been read to UTS, that's fine. Now, uh, 
there is this command Q query or indicate or to log that I can use, you know, uh, as a general user. So I can typically query the files to see if there are anything in the virtual reader, virtual punch, or virtual printer the, of the UTS virtual machine. But as you can see, there's nothing there. So if I query the reader, there's nothing there. So this file has been uh, really uh, read and transferred to UTS, but it's no longer into the virtual reader of the virtual machine of UTS, so it's somewhere else, actually. It's in that spool folder or directory I showed you. So if I do this, USR spool, there is, as you can see, the mail there, the secret mail, and there is the reader, okay? So that's where my file is located for the moment. Uh, if I do this, audio, there is a file zero, that's the first one that was uh, transferred here. If I copy it, so maybe I go into this place and I copy USR spool reader file zero into profile. Oop, and that create, where am I? Ah, I'm not at the right place. <coughs> Slash to it. Ah. When you're recording a video, you don't see, uh, not user doc. Uh, reader, file zero into profile. Okay, cat profile. As you can see, so maybe login. Nope. Guest, ask for you. And now I have my welcome. Okay. Maybe I do a make a bin binary to my own commands. Okay. So that's one way, but of course it's not very uh, interesting because you have these files accumulating in the reader uh, directory and you don't have the control to it. So it would be better if the file could go to the user, but this can be done provided you give a first record on the, on the file, uh, the transferred file. So let's read a little bit more about VM read. The header, if there is a header in the, uh, in the file, then things will be different. The header is the first 80 bytes of the reader file, so that's the first record. First word, the first word is the, the header is a magic number to indicate that this is indeed a header. And after that, you have three blank separated fields each of which must be present. These fields must be in upper EBCDIC and will be translated to lowercase ASCII. Any character following an EBCDIC backlash will be translated to ASCII only. Well, these fields are, and you give the information essentially uh, to where you want to put it, to which user you want to send the file. So it might be difficult to do uh, from the card reader of VM, because we would have on the host to prepare a file in such a way that when it is read by this dev in it and translated it on Upsidic and has the proper uh, information, you know, so that's going to be uh, properly uh, uh, transmitted to the right user. But maybe this is possible. I haven't tried it. So instead of doing that, I go through CMS user instead, and I created a, a small command for that. So maybe I show you. Uh, that's VM, lady, to distinguish. So log on CMS user, CMS user. Uh -huh, good. All right. Now I'm going to send a file. I called it uh, UTS, uh, UTS PUN, or UTS PUNCH. And let me uh, read this file. 
it's an exec, actually a rec script. So if I type uh, UTS exec, punch a file to UTS with the magic number. So it's a plain rex uh, script. And I use the, the fact that the Rex on this VM370 Community Edition works pretty good. So uh, it's nothing complicated. As you can see, I put the, the, uh, the magic number here plus the information we need. So if I want to transfer a file, I just have to do uh, from CMS to a user. I just have to say UTS pun uh, with the user on UTS and the file name here on the CMS. So maybe I transfer a file. So let me dev in it 00C. There's another program, the Queen's program of Mushix. That's a C program. Okay, so let me read this thing. If I, we look at it. It's the Queen's program, but in C, not in PL1, okay? Very simple. It's exactly the algorithm that uh, Mushix wrote at the time. So if I want to send this to my guest account, I would say UTS pun guest Queen's C. And then here I have a message to the effect that uh, a parcel was received. If I do this, Queens is there. And there's something interesting. Oh, sorry. If you do cut Queens C. On UTS, you know, the bracket, uh, the opening, closing bracket are not used. We use instead the parentheses uh, like this. And uh, the this... Uh, replacement characters. This is described actually most probably in the C documentation. But the nice thing is that apparently with this punch, the translation is done, you know. The VM read, the VM read program will do the, the translation because if I do queens here, you can see that there are brackets and braces over there. So this is typical of the standard coding. And when I punch this to uh, UTS, there is a translation from EBSEDIC to ASCII and with these special uh, characters done. So that's a nice thing. So uh, <coughs> I think it's going to happen also if you read from the, uh, the card reader directly in C here instead of using CMS user. But, but maybe it's easier to transfer a bunch of files on CMS user first and then punch these to UTS, the UTS user, you know, using that command. And you can write another script, a rec script, if you wish to perform the task and automatize the, the whole thing the proper way, if, if you're interested. So in a way, I believe it's not impossible to transfer files to a user on a UTS going through uh, a standard CMS virtual machine, provided we have, you know, uh, rec scripts on the CMS to do the job and automatize things. But the language is good now or better, not as uh, sophisticated as uh, modern recs on other machines, but it's a start. So I think it's certainly possi to, uh, possible to go this way. Uh, so that's for entering data into uh, uh, a user. Well, if you want to send data outside uh, the, the virtual machine or the, the account on UTS, okay, so if I have some, for example, uh, let's say uh, precisely those, uh, those files, you know, there's a bunch of files here. I'd like these files to end up on my host, for example, and have them possibly uh, properly set up and printed on my host. So how... How can I do that? I can always print, but I will have all this. Uh, it's not that bad, but it's going to print uh, in a continuous flow. Okay, so you will have to do uh, a few, uh, a few manipulations on the files to uh, 
uh, end up with something uh, workable, I guess. But one thing you can do is use tapes. So tapes is probably the best way to exchange data between uh, UTS systems, I would say, in my opinion. Although, uh, remember, we have this uh, VM punch. Uh, and you can punch to any virtual machine, and we can also provide a tag information. So it means we could possibly punch to RSCS with a tag. So if RSCS is properly set up, maybe with some more modern version of the kernel, of the nucleus, you know, uh, maybe it's possible to send files there and use RSCS and facilities of RSCS to uh, transfer files and stuff like that. That's it's not impossible. I don't know exactly if it's possible and if it's not, but I believe there is potential there. So maybe it's not a, a desperate uh, issue over here. But one thing certainly possible is to punch, uh, not punch, but to save the files in a tape. Okay, and when we do that, it's easy to write to a tape and read from a tape. So if we have a lot of stuff that we would like to transfer from one system to another, uh, I think the tape is the best uh, way to do it. And so let me show you how to do uh, to do this. Uh, there is a command called tape, <laughs> and that mounts a tape actually, okay, or unmount one. And then, if you want to save files on the tape, you use the command tar. I know that tar is typically used <laughs> to create archive files today, but it's actually a tape archiver, so it's supposed to archive files on a tape. So you can use tar to save files on the tape that you just uh, attach to your virtual machine. So let me show you how it's going to work. Uh, so, first things you do a tape, let's say I want a mount and I want to write on the tape, so I have to say explicitly, because if I don't, it's going to mount it uh, read only. And then I give the name of the tape, okay, that's a label if you wish, although it's not exactly a label, it's a, it's a name for the tape that I'm going to use in the tar command. So let's say UTS, uh, T, uh, I'm going to use six letters like this. This will generate automatically a command on the console here, or the console of VM370. There's a message from you, hey, mount a tape, you know, with on this particular address, with a ring, so writable, and that uh, density and so on. So one thing you can do is just do dev init, not 101, 181, but uh, you have to use a real address for the tape first. So let's say UTS TP1 at. If the file uh, UTS TP1 dot at does not exist yet, uh, when you do this, it's going to be created automatically. That's fine. And then we have to attach, uh, sorry, that guy to UTS, sorry, as one on one because that's the address he's expecting. Oh, but I, and then you see the message, tape uh, UTS TP1 is ready. So now I can write on my tape. So where am I? Uh, right there. So maybe I go one step. And now I do tar, create virtual on UTS TP1, what's on tar? And now he's going to add this. So all the files were added to the tapes. That's good. Now I want to unmount my tape. So first thing I do is dev init 481 star. That's going to remove the, the, the tape from the machine. And then I do tape uh, unmount SUP1. Uh, uh, no. TP1, and you can see tape detached from uh, UTS, okay, so that's fine, and uh, uh, 
The nice thing, of course, you can read this the other way around, but the nice thing that was shown to me on the Discord channel is the following. So, suppose I go there, sorry for the... And I go, where do I go? To desktop VM. Okay. There should be a file uh, UTS uh, at, and there's this command, head get. Uh, no, it's uh, head get uh, like this. Help, okay. So it's gonna extract files. So on this tape, there is only one file, the tar file, okay, that I, that, that I just saved. So what I can do is uh, extract this file and uh, it turns out that I can read it easily. Okay, so if I do at get, uh, let's say out.tar1, uh, uh, record's gonna be variable and I'm gonna this. This extract the file out tar tar so let me mk0 out and then i can extract this huh? and if i go out all the files are there hmm? so that's interesting so it's easy to get uh, all the, th the stuff that we want. We just have to use a tape and extract it if we wish. What would be nice is be able to do the, the reverse. Okay, so just creating, I don't know if it's possible, but just uh, creating a, a tar file on my host and then with some utility create the the Hercules emulated tape and then read it the other way around on my uh, UTS account. That would be probably, if this can be made to work properly, part of the file should be Epsidzik, the other one should be ASCII maybe, I'm not sure exactly, but if this could be made to work with some command on the host, you know, that would be probably the solution to transferring files on there on a UTS uh, user account and that would make it uh, much more interesting. Although we would have probably or possibly the, the problem of uh, the brackets and the braces and the, the stuff like that. So we have to be careful about that, I suppose, uh, because we read the tape and <coughs> so I don't know if I transfer a file. I haven't tried it, to be honest. Uh, if I transfer a C program, do I keep this uh, this um, specific uh, way to code the bracket and the braces uh, on the file or not. So that could be a problem, of course, but if we go through the CMS virtual machine, that, that's going to be fine. Anyway, so uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to explain So <clears throat> or discuss with you is just the beginning. If you look at the, the source of all these commands, I guess you you can figure it out how you can modify things to make uh, uh, all kinds of uh, new stuff or all kinds of new uh, features on the system. Uh, you can code in C. That's an old compiler with an old syntax that predates uh, ANSI, I guess. But uh, uh, still, I think it works pretty, uh, pretty nice. I like it personally. I like the system for the fun of it because it's it's a system designed to work with VM370. It's not a, a Linux uh, that comes from uh, outside and we try to fit in this, mo this mode. It was a system developed at the same time with uh, which uh, takes into account, you know, the, the environment in which it is uh, running. So I like this idea a little bit and I think that uh, it must be possible to use, well, I believe it must be possible to use it uh, more than uh, what we think, even though TCP IP is not on it, you know. Uh, it knows about the virtual machines and it knows about our RSCS. So if we can make it talk to RSCS, we can probably uh, make the system talk to a, a network in general, in my opinion. So, But that belongs to the people who have the expertise. I don't have it, but uh, you, 
Unix and Linux people around the world. That's about time that that's one opportunity for you. Not about time, but it's a one opportunity for you to explore, hopefully. Okay, so I'm going to leave you right here and wish you the best. Okay, bye-bye.